Hey everyone, I'm Jesse McCollum, Everlast Brand Ambassador. Today we're going to jump into AC waveforms, show you the pros and cons of each. Up here on the board, we've got all four AC waveforms advanced square, soft square, triangle, and sine, which is generally considered the old school transformer waveform. We're going to start here with advanced square. You can see that we have maximum amount of time spent at our electrode positive and our electrode negative with a very harsh transfer between the two. This is actually a good thing. This very fast transfer time creates a very stable arc. Now it does produce a very high pitched, kind of harsh sound, which we'll hear when we run a couple beads. So let's get started and run some advanced square. Okay, here we are running our advanced square wave bead. We light up, you can see it's a nice stable arc, good start. As we're running along, you're noticing the arc isn't wandering at all. We're getting a nice smooth etch line. The toes are tying in real nice on the bead. It's just a very nice, stable, very controlled arc. We're gonna be running all these around 100 amps on the machine, probably using 85, 90 amps on the pedal. We're at 120 hertz, 35% electrode positive on our balance. As you can see, we come along here towards the end and the plate started to warp on me and it almost got my tongues and I actually had to pull the arc back a little bit, let off the pedal, and you, you can kind of see in the, the clear shot that there's almost a little restart there, but didn't touch the tungsten, we're good to go. So here we have our advanced square wave run. You can see we had a very nice stable arc. There's no crazy etching marks. Along the weld, the etching's very smooth, very consistent. The toes of the weld are very consistent. This is just a very nice, stable, high heat input waveform. So yeah, taking an overview of this weld, you can see start to finish, very stable etching. And that's one way you can kind of differentiate between these waveforms is we're gonna have a very smooth, even consistent um, etching line there, which shows that we have a very stable arc. All right, next, we're moving on to soft square. Now, when you compare advanced square and soft square, they look pretty much the same. But what we have is a maximum time at our peaks, electrode positive and electrode negative. But instead of a harsh transition down and up, we've got this slight roll into our transitions. And what this does, it creates a little softer arc, not quite as harsh of a sound when we're running. Now that we know what it does, let's go look at it. All right, here we are with soft square wave. You can see we had a nice smooth start. Bead is wetting in real nice. We've got a good travel speed now. Toes are tying in real good. We've got a nice stable arc. We've got a nice stable etching line. And this is exactly what soft square is supposed to do. It's a little bit softer than the uh, advanced square. So when I'm talking about it's a little bit softer arc, what I'm getting at is that it wets in a little bit better. It's not, the puddle doesn't freeze quite as fast. So you've got a little more play with the puddle. It's just a good all around waveform. All right, here we have soft square. Uh, made our pass, it's a nice stable arc. The etching was super stable. It's a little bit softer than the advanced square. You saw that the puddle doesn't freeze quite as fast. So this is a good, all around setting, a little bit less heat input than advanced square, but still a very nice, stable, easy to use art. Now let's move on to triangle wave. All right, guys, we drew the triangle wave a little shorter here, uh, just to try to highlight that normally triangle wave is used with a higher frequency, just cause it's meant for thin materials. The actual waveform here is not drawn to a one hertz scale like the rest of them. You can see with the triangle wave, we're spending a very little amount of time at our peak electrode positive and our peak electrode negative amperage with a very quick changeover rate. So this is going to give us very low heat input, but a very stable arc. So this is great for thin materials. Let's go back to the table and run some triangle wave. Okay, here we go. Nice stable arc. Still at 100 amps here on triangle wave. You can see it's a little sluggish forming the puddle having to labor a little bit here as we make this run. It's 
still a nice stable arc. It's just a little slow, so you can really you can really see the reduced heat input here with Triangle Wave. Let's go back to the machine. We'll step up our amperage, come back, and make another run. All right, here we are. We're back on Triangle Wave. We've jumped up to 130 amps. You can see already, puddle forms a lot faster. We're also increasing our travel speed. The toes are tying in a lot better. Um, you can tell before the toes had a real sharp edge to them. And this is, this is why people run Triangle Wave. It's really good for thin material. You have a lot less heat input, but still have a very stable arc. Uh, so yeah, we jumped up almost 30 amps, and now we're back to uh, what we had with Soft Square and Advanced Square. So here we go, post weld on Triangle Wave. Here we were at 100 amps. You can see the toes here are, there's a very defined toe. It's a sharp peak between them. Um, it's all, the weld itself is also very convex. It looks cold, it is cold. So we went ahead and we jumped up our amperage. We went up 30 amps to 130. See the toes here are tied in nice and, nice and smooth. The weld's a little flatter. We had a little bit higher travel speed. Um, this is definitely where we need to be and that's why we have triangle wave it's definitely a re reduced heat input all right we just got done running some triangle wave we're back to look at sine wave this is your, kind of your tried and true your old school your transformer waveform it's a very smooth transition up and down very minimum time spent at your peaks so it's still kind of a low heat input waveform but significantly more than uh than triangle so this was normally ran at like 60 hertz from your your old transformer machines. Today we're going to keep all the settings the same. We're going to run the sine wave at 120 hertz and see how it compares to the other three. Okay, here we have sine wave. You said this is kind of your old transformer uh, type of waveform. Generally ran at 60 hertz back in the day. Today we're running at 120 hertz. See, it's still a nice stable arc. It's a little bit shaky on the edge of the, uh, the etching there. You can kind of see it's got some peaks. Uh, overall, it's still pretty stable. It's a little bit lazier than, uh, than our advanced square or our soft square, but it has a little more heat input than our triangle wave, which is exactly what we expected. Um, as we run along, this, is, this feels like running a, a tuned up transformer machine. So this is a, a very nice soft arc wets in real nice still a useful waveform in certain situations all right guys we just got done running sine wave like i said it's kind of our old school transformer waveform results were what we expected slightly more heat input than triangle wave a little bit less than uh, advanced square and uh, soft wave still a nice waveform it runs super smooth good wet in I tend to like sine wave for like thick butt welds. I'll use it for cast sometimes too. Just a good all around waveform. That's our four waveforms. We got advanced square, soft square, triangle, and sine wave. Hopefully this video explained them for you and you'll be able to use them to your advantage now. I'm Jesse McCollum, brain ambassador for Everlast. Follow me on Instagram at McCollum.WeldFab. Remember, weld mean, weld green.